Hi guys, Victor from Tech Heads here. Before we get started today, I would like to announce once again that our Patreon is officially live, but this time with some extra features. When you sign up, you officially become a producer of the show. This means that you will get access to exclusive behind the scenes content such as our extensive show notes. On top of this, you will also have access to the episodes four days earlier than everybody else. If this sounds good to you, feel free to check it out at patreon.com slash techheads. Four, three, now two, on with the show. One, 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 one. So, here we go. <laughs> okay. It's the 50th clap. Happy 50th. <laughs> oh my gosh. We made it this far. I know. It's unbelievable. We've been doing this for a year and a half, I think. Yeah. Yeah, because we started Mm -hmm. our first episode came out on January 31st of 2021. Right. Yeah. Here we are still doing it. That's a long time ago. Um, Yeah. Well, welcome, guys. Welcome to the 50th Spectacular. And uh, I think this is so stupid, but. In celebration of our 50th episode, I figured, why not record on my balcony? So here I am uh, outside on my balcony recording. So if you if you hear any crazy stuff, uh, just accept it. You know, that's life. We're outside. We're living in the moment. We're chilling. Um, right. It's so stupid because this is an audio only f- piece of media. So it's strictly just for you and me, mostly for me. But <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm outside, I'm chilling. Uh, Anna would do the same, but I don't want to make her do that because apparently it's super hot over there. So it's not yeah. a, it's not a full balcony spectacular, but maybe if we both have nice days, maybe we'll both do a balcony recording. I think that'd be, that'd be pretty funny. Yeah, that would be, you know, like, um, closer. Yeah. Obviously like in Florida, we know that it's mainly summer year round, you know, but, um, but I think that later on in the year, we can definitely try that because I see a little breeze out there now, but it's still like in the nineties. So once the breeze is gone, you're like, you know, you're still baking. So, um, not worth it. I have the, the, (laughs) yeah, I have the, the fan on in here in full blast and it's still kind of warm, but, um, but yeah, no, we'll, we'll try it again next time. Yeah, for I'm sure. I'm glad you can do it though. Yeah. Yeah. It's still, it's still not summer, even though it's literally halfway through June, it's still kind of cold mm-hmm. and That's it's nice. still not very sunny for some reason. This is apparently the wettest, coldest spring in 81 years over here. Wow. So I thought I was going crazy because I'm like, wait, it's it gets warmer and sunnier by now for sure. Like March, it'll just be mm. beautiful. And that just hasn't happened yet. So I think hmm. hopefully by next weekend, it'll it'll start actually being normal summer. So that'll be exciting. Yeah. Um, I'm out here just grubbing on McDonald's <laughs> as a true uh, as a true small business love in Portlander, just uh, supporting small, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Mc- yeah, eating. I just had a, a frozen pizza for lunch just to buy myself, a, you know, a little time because I went out to dinner with my family yesterday. So I'm definitely not that hungry. Mm-hmm. Um, and tomorrow we're doing, you know, Father's Day meal at my sister's. So I'm, I don't really feel like eating much today. I'm just going to like snack on on stuff. So essentially the pizza I had was more of a flatbread. But whatever, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I uh this this brings up something funny before we get into the game but i went out with uh my team for the first time i met my team oh did you okay Mm -hmm. how did that go it was amazing so um yeah so it was uh it was my team and then Mm -hmm. the manager and the director of our department and then the vice president of our department so a good handful of people we went to this uh it was all it was all on the company so that was pretty awesome we went to this place okay. called mox in portland and it's so fun it's like a it's like a big uh restaurant bar and uh-huh. you go there and you play games like dungeons and dragons or oh, wow. uh Catan or i mean spectrum like card games and board games basically but it's mm-hmm. like fancy it's not like cheesy and crazy because I, I remember seeing these places in Florida 
I went to a couple. I just wasn't really, I didn't really like how uh, ugly it was in there. I don't know, just like neon yeah. lights and like there's no food mm-hmm. or drinks. It was just like a place you play games. But this place had it all figured out. I mean, they had like a wow. crystal chandelier and like just great decor and tiles in our, and we had a private room. So that was wow, really fun. That yeah. Awesome. Uh, amazing food, amazing, uh, amazing vibes. It was, it was awesome. I really, because this whole time that I've worked, uh, at our company, it really hasn't felt real. And this really solidified that I actually work for a real company with real people. So that was, yeah. it was really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. I feel like, um, I was actually just talking to someone, uh, this past week about doing some, you know, volunteer work um, on behalf of the company because mm-hmm. they give us that, you know, like the annual like one day of service that you can that you can go to like a, a charity or do some volunteer work. And I was like, yeah, definitely. You know, if uh, if it's it's if, if it's um, uh, like, a, you know, physical or or virtual, I'm, I'm happy to help um, because I feel like, you know, that that can actually I can share like. I want to share, you know, like the good experience I've had um, with the company and, uh, you know, pass on, like give any advice that I may be able to, um, you know, like if it's related to the career. If not, then, you know, whatever I can do to help, it will be it'll be really um, it's something that I'm really interested about. So that is probably the, the I think the the closest I'll get because I don't really have like a lot of other co-workers there's one person I know that also lives here like in Orlando in the Orlando area at least um we're in the same team but we work on different products you know so right, right, right. it's a little different um the people that I work like more closely with they're all over the country so it would be kind of hard for us to meet unless they came down for like a vacation or something like that you know um but uh but yeah it will be It'll be interesting one day if we get to meet. Um, but so far, yeah, it's just been virtual, but yeah. it, that's okay with me. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh that's remote life, guys, but you know, uh-huh. if you're if you're lucky enough to like, you know, live near an office or whatever, you, you can usually get that social aspect of the remote life uh, and see yeah. people occasionally, but yeah, it, right. I mean, it sucks cuz I'm sure you've made friends at work, but they're just, you know, they're three and a half thousand miles away for the most part, I'm sure. Right. And I'm sure there's people on the East Coast and the UK as well. But I mean, I mm-hmm. would say the majority of the people do work over here on the West Coast. So, I mean, it is kind of unfortunate because I'm, I'm sure you like a ton of people that you've met also. But I mean, oh, unless yeah, there's a absolutely. company trip out here, you probably won't mm-hmm. really take the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, th- currently don't really have like any plans to go, you know, to um, to the West Coast. But yeah, that's not to say that it might not happen in the future. Um, but uh, but yeah, definitely can't be like on a Friday. Hey, you want to go grab a beer? You know, because uh, yeah. <laughs> we can do virtual beers, <laughs> exactly, but that's yeah. about it. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, so. um, Nico is coming out here to Portland. Oh, fun. Yay. Yeah, because uh his partner's family is out here, so they're gonna come visit them. But then, while they're out here, uh, we're gonna hang out. Maybe we'll record. Maybe we'll do an in-person recording. I don't know. I haven't really oh, talked fun. too much yeah, to yeah. him about that. But that'd be kind of cool to do a, my first in-person podcast with somebody. So, uh, yeah, maybe you could absolutely. be on it as well. We could do like a a three-way pod for the first time. Who knows? We'll that'd see. That'd be really cool. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. We'll pencil that in for later. And uh, mm-hmm. um, anyway, do we want to get in with the game? I, I think I'm. I think I'm in. So yeah, yeah. So um, I mean, I guess I'm just gonna, you know, like the cat's out of the box at least for us because we're gonna take the the quiz. But this is gonna be my, my recommendation on later on in the, um, you know, the the episode. So there's this app, um, like this app online called Kahoot that you can create online quizzes and they're pretty cool. They play like little music. You can add a theme, like make it all colorful. Basically you have like an admin that creates the, the questions and then you can share, you can just ask people to go to, uh, Kahoot.it and enter the game like pin number, you know, and then you can play it on your phone or on the computer. I used it when I was at the boot camp, um, like uh, in 2017, and I thought it was really cool. So I was like, why not do a little, you know, um, like trivia about like, some of the milestones that we've already hit, you know, now that we've uh, reached our 50th episode. So 
Um, yeah, let's get into it. I'm uh, nervous. Let's, let's do it. They're pretty quick, though. I left five seconds per question, so you oh. got to really think quick on your oh, Okay, feet. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> okay, question one in three, two, one, go. What's the question? Was it too fast? I didn't see a question. I just saw I just saw three shapes. Really? Yeah. It, it's not showing the top top list in the episode at the top, like as a question. I don't think so. I didn't see anything. No, I just saw I saw a triangle and a circle and a square. <laughs> uh, let me see if I can restart it. Yeah, no, that's not how it's supposed to be. Okay, going. sweet. Yeah, I was like, what? <laughs> question. What's up, gamers? Welcome to Kahoot with Anna and Victor. Oh, well, while you're doing that, I'll tell a quick story. So, uh, last night there was it's Pride Month. So happy Pride Month, guys! We forgot to to say that last yeah, episode, but uh, we la- did last. Uh, oh, is this new link perfect? Yeah, last night there I'm was. I'm gonna a, share my screen too, so you can see the oh. the questions. I feel like that might that might help. Okay, yeah, that works. Uh, let's see, let's see. Um, last night there was a there was a block party down the road here. Uh, downtown and uh, it was awesome there was a drag queen there was a DJ Ooh. there was it was at a crazy cool like marketing agency office with just it looked like a museum it was it was so beautiful um, yeah it was so fun and they had like a bunch of food and drinks everywhere and uh, the the drag queen like absolutely murdered it like wearing the, wow. the biggest heels and it was outside so it's like you know, it's not like a stage, so it was like road and just like jumping yeah. all around and not falling at all. It was so cool. Oh my god! <laughs> and all right, Kahoot, let's do it. Quiz, top listened episode. <gasps> oh, it's gotta be, it's gotta be episode one, right? Or yeah, episode. Oh wait, but it could be episode zero. I'm gonna go zero. It's episode zero. Yeah. <gasps> what episode seventeen? It was the note episode, which is crazy because. When I looked at the stats, it's still, like, top one by a bunch. Like, number two is, like, I don't know, maybe, like, 100 listens less or something like that. Mm. It's significantly, like, higher, you know, which is really cool. Um, Um, That uh, one was a hit. Jeez, that's awesome. I actually did not know that. All Uh, right. Well, so I have I have one wrong then. I Next guess. One. Oh, wait, is this against? Are we going against? Because you made the questions, right? Yeah, so I feel oh, like right, I, right. it's only for you. Okay, so um, I have zero correct answer. right now. Got it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Maybe, I mean, I think I forgot the answers to some of the, num- the, uh, the number ones, but. Uh, Big tuna, yeah. zero. <laughs> All right, number two. How many crypto episodes? Oh, that's how many crypto episodes? Oh my gosh, it comes up so much, but crypto centric. I mean, I'm gonna have to go with four. Yeah, that's what's up. All right. Sweet. All right. Very good. One for two. Why is it saying zero? You got it right though, right? I did. That's weird. Eh, oh well. Well, yeah, we're keeping score, yeah, so well, yeah, you yeah, got yeah. that one right. Yeah, sweet. What is our 25th episode? Mmm. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, God. I'm going to go 25th episode blockchain development. No. Oh, it was Ooh. Nico speaking of the devil. Yeah. All it was right. a good episode. True or false? Oh, God. India's ranked number two. In our listener count. Huh. India. India. <laughs> India. India. I believe it. I'm going to go with Trill. Yeah. All right. Alrighty. Sweet. Um, on this note, I I just found out uh, Twitch's number one, like, uh, target, not target audience, but uh, most popular uh, country for people who, like, go on Twitch a lot um, is the United States. And then uh, a close second is Brazil. Really? Yeah. Oh wait, no. It oh, actually wow. it might not be country. It might be the. It might be actually most popular language. It's one of those. It's either oh, uh, wow. language or country. But um, either way, second is uh, Brazilian or Brazil. 
Yeah, I don't doubt it because I when I grew up, like uh, my my cousins used to play a lot of games, mm-hmm. um, and uh, I don't know. Like when I was in school, I'm pretty sure that like all the boys also played, you know, a bunch of like video games. But then girls did too. So right, right. That yeah, that's really cool though. Yeah, just learned that yesterday. Well, I guess yes. I didn't learn it because I don't remember the stat, but you know. Yeah, yeah. All right, last one. Ready? All right, let's do it. Big tuna. <laughs> Big tuna. What is our all-time high daily download count? Ooh. Oh wow, those are all so close. Forty-nine, fifty, fifty-one, fifty-two. Um, let's go fifty-two. Oh, I think I read out of time, uh, but. Fifty. Fifty. Yeah, that was I mean, a that was really cool. It happened just a couple months ago. It was earlier this year. So daily download count. Daily down. What does that exactly mean? Is that like one, like our all time highest in one single day? Yeah. How many, how many episodes, like how many downloads, regardless of episode, how many were downloaded in a single day? The all time high was 50. Wow. Good That's job, guys. Cool, right? Oh my God. Keep spreading that word. Yeah, right. One out of five. I think I got actually like two, but. Yeah, yeah, you did. Um, uh, yeah, so Kahoot, I remember just this past week, I was like, oh, I want to come up with like a little, you know, a cool little quiz thing. And uh, I know that we've done quizzes. You've done like such a good job on the ones that you did. But I was like, oh, I remember we used a really cool thing at the boot camp. I want to try and find it. And I came across it after, you know, digging a little bit this week. So this is really neat. Um, it's I think it works better because what we used to do at the boot camp was we were in class, you know, so the instructor Uh, was projecting his screen on the computer and then he gave us the pin number so we could answer on our laptops or on our phones oh that's right Um, and and that's why it only it only shows the tiles like for the users that are answering the questions you Mm -hmm. know so um but yeah it's still interactive and and cool you know with very little lag like as soon as you launch the game and you uh enter the pin number like you're right in the room so it's really quick Wow, yeah, I I do remember that now. I it do you remember like uh, was it was it like like a quiz of some sort where like we had to actually do well or was it just like for fun we were uh, like yeah. it was about whatever topic we were doing because I remember like we had like quote unquote graded tests and quizzes but right. they probably didn't do that with the Kahoot it was probably just more for fun. Yeah, I know that um, for with Kahoot, I think it was just like um, like some, you know, keywords or like key concepts that we learned the previous day. So as a refresher, right before we got into something new, you know, for like that that day's class, we kind of uh, answered, you know, these questions to to like refresh our minds about what we were working on on the previous class. So that was that was cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, just the little things, you know, that I feel like I learned at the boot camp that I would have never, I think, known about unless, you know, like, a, um, unless they told me. Uh, but yeah, the our instructor was really cool, like, you know, cool, like, uh, sharp. I, I mean, the first, th- I think the first time I learned about Slack was in the boot camp. I had never heard about Slack before. So, oh, interesting. Uh, yeah, so I I still like using I still use like a bunch of the tools that they you know mm-hmm. that they taught us in the in Same, the yeah. camp. So yeah, Kahoot people, that's my recommendation for today. Sweet, yeah, I'll mark it below. Um, I'll I'll get to my recommendation maybe towards the end. Uh, cool. Oh, do we want to? Uh, oh, actually, I have to I have to sh- I have to share some crazy news I just found. Uh, before we get into the main topic, I guess, but uh. I just found out that they're creating VR headsets for cows. What? Yeah, like moo cows. And no way. I I guess like the thought process behind it is that it'll it'll stress them out. Uh, it, I mean, not stress them. Out. It'll uh, it'll calm them down because they they can make it so that they uh, they'll see like an open big field. So, uh-huh. so they, I guess they they should produce better milk as well. So that's like their thinking behind wow. it, like a de stressor yes. sort of situation. But uh, I don't know because if they if they can't see like what's in front of them, or if they do think they're in an open field, aren't they just gonna try to like I don't know, like they they might run into things and hurt themselves and make the milk worse. <laughs> like 
Yeah, right. That's a good point. And how do they, how do, like, how do you keep that on? I mean, maybe if it's like a whole, like, head kind of thing with, like, straps and all mm-hmm. that, you know? It's probably not going to look, I mean, it might look close to what we humans wear. Like, you know, the Oculus or whatever it is, like some of the devices now, the ones, the the one for PlayStation. But oh, right. um, I wonder what it would look like. Oh, my God. That's just, who even thought of that? Can you imagine like the guy that was just like, yeah, how about uh, VR, <laughs> VR headsets for cows? All right, guys, listen to this. <laughs> VR Seriously. cows. Put them together. <laughs> VR cows. <laughs> I bet that guy. No, he was probably in the metaverse, like on a farm, and he was like, huh. yeah. and like he probably saw a virtual cow, and he was yeah. like, oh, they could use a VR headset too. <laughs> yeah, someone had to pitch that idea, which is funny in itself. <laughs> so. They called a meeting for this <laughs> yeah. thing. Like that's so funny. <laughs> Listen, um, you know, in our 2023 quarterly uh, uh, Q1 efforts, we're going to yeah. be focusing on <laughs> cow No, this is what or- they did. They called a meeting and each person in the meeting got two glasses of milk. And the guy's like, all right, everybody try the one on your left and then try the one <laughs> on your right. And they like taste completely different. And he's like, one on the one on the left is a stressed out, sad cow. The one on the right <laughs> is a, from the milk of a cow who wore a VR headset. And the people are like, what? And he probably just gave them sour milk. He probably, you know, completely. Yeah, uh, clearly. Right. Yeah. J- just messed up the experiment on purpose. But uh, yeah, I'm sure that's how it worked out, probably. Yeah. No, that that's just a very funny idea. But hey, you know, we'll see if that ever turns into a thing. Um we, it, I, I'm dying for like a a picture of a cow wearing a VR headset, so we'll it, have yeah. to keep an eye on that. <laughs> if they come out to, and they're released to the public, I'm gonna buy a VR headset for the cow before I buy my own VR headset just to <laughs> just to t- just to hold it. <laughs> I bet it's huge. I bet it's massive. Oh my god! Yeah, they have such big I heads. Know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. You know, it's funny because, um, well, you know, cows, I just think of like animals as a whole. And then what about for dogs? Like, Mm -hmm. I wonder how that would be. But I can't even put a hat on Augie. So there's no way that he would ever even try, you know, that thing on. He Mm -hmm. doesn't like glasses and he doesn't like hats. I feel like that's pretty much, you know, like what a, a headset would be like essentially wearing, you know, glasses and then something like on your head or whatever. But, um, yeah, unfortunately he wouldn't be a good candidate for that. <laughs> so maybe one day, but yeah, yeah. Maybe, oh, be, maybe they'll make something that you don't have to put it on your head. You just like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Something, something crazy where you don't have to physically like strap something on your head to be in a virtual world. You yeah. just like, I don't know take a pill or I know. something stupid like that i guess they already have that huh i guess that would be called drugs but <laughs> <laughs> yeah right that is already around it has been around for a long time right we actually you know we've had you know um like the metaverse for uh, i don't know hundreds of or thousands of years <laughs> that's we right. just uh we called it a different name <laughs> right that's that's a very good point um <laughs> How about we jump into the main topic? Do we want to do that? Yeah, let's do it. Sweet. Let's do it. Um, so I wanted to talk about Agile a little bit because it's something that, uh, I don't know, maybe a lot of you have, uh, maybe a lot of you m- might even work at a company that says like, oh, we're Agile or we practice Agile methodology, um, or you've just heard it in passing or on a TV show or... Uh, maybe you've heard Scrum or Kanban, like those those terms, and you're just like, all right, I, I guess I see what it is, but like, what really is this stuff? So mm-hmm. that was me very re- up until I would say pretty recently, because um, my team, uh, we all work uh, pretty much asynchronously, and uh, it uh, uh, it's like sort of sort of agilely, but at the same time, it's not because we don't. Uh, we don't do any sprints and we don't have like uh, retrospective meetings of those uh, sorts. And we don't really mm-hmm. do, uh, uh, I don't know, like the meetings we do, it's more about like the problems we're facing with like a specific task. And uh, mm-hmm. 
it's all like out of a queue so it's not true agile but it's like it's pretty close because we do have like the different stages of it which we'll get into mm-hmm. in a second but uh I know that you have a lot of experience with agile so this I thought would be perfect to talk about because your team actually uh uses agile methodology and you guys even use software to track it and mm-hmm. you guys you guys probably take turns being uh scrum masters or um whatever the like I don't know what the the Kanban version of a scrum master would be but uh yeah, yeah. No, I think um, I yeah. After I started, you know, um, this job, I definitely noticed how well structured it was. You know, like I think that the company has been doing has been like using Agile for a long time to you know control like the software development life cycle, um, and um, it's been a very good practice. I like it a lot because it's very organized. You know, mm-hmm. like you know what what to expect. So to like how does it affect like my workflow so basically you know and we're gonna go into like the the topics i have a huge cheat uh agile and scrum cheat sheet in front of me i shared with victor but um uh some like i I would say that pretty much most of this to an extent applies to what i to what i see on a like a, a daily or weekly basis so we have two week long sprints and then at the beginning of every sprint, um, at least for my team, because we're not actually in charge of building new features, you know, we are part of like product engineering, but we are in charge of doing support or like um, fixing bugs, you know, that are already in the code. Uh, we do consult like regularly with the, de- the actual developers of those features to see if we need their help, you know, trying to correct a bug. Um, but, um, but yeah, so we have two week long sprints and at the beginning of each sprint um, for our daily standups, because we have daily standups, you know, mm-hmm. to kind of uh, see where everybody's at. Uh, we have a new person that's assigned, you know, from our team to run the standups. And at the last day of each sprint, we have our, uh, you know, our regular daily standup. And then we also have the retro where we mm-hmm. kind of, yeah, we do like a retrospective of the of the um, of the sprint that just wrapped up. And basically, we just go over like some of the things. Um, I like the one the one uh, phase of that retrospective meeting that we uh, choose, uh, you know, like habits that we should continue habits that we should start or things that we should um, stop doing. And we try to recognize like a pattern between the issues that we handled, you know, if there is something that we might have to. Uh, relate to our manager or our lead, you know, to maybe have a conversation about how we're getting those issues from like other departments. If there's a new process that that they might have to implement or like some kind of uh, knowledge transfer, you know, that we might have to do so they uh, so we can kind of like put a cap on all, on those issues because we're like, okay, let's see, like in the past two weeks, if we got like two or three of the same issue, clearly there's a knowledge gap, you know, so let's try to close that gap and teach them how to deal with this so we don't keep getting the same issues over and over because pretty much like our goal in this team is to uh, deal with issues once like we don't want repeat offenders you know like we want to fix problems and then that will be the end of it sure it does happen you know like if it's a similar issue you might see it again in in weeks or months you know but um but generally like we try to correct you know some of the um the really uh distinguished like the really specific problems and that's what like we address during those retrospective meetings but yeah they tend at least for our you know organization they're two weeks long Mm -hmm. um and then at the end right exactly Um, so, and then in terms of like the, uh, like the release cycle, you know, cause we have monthly deploys that go out those monthly deploys, they contain, uh, sometimes they contain, um, like new features as well as bug fixes. Um, so, and then we have quarterly releases, which is when our toggles are flipped to on. So those new features get flipped to on, you know, for the clients to see the difference. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, we have like three ma- major quarterly releases, um, in, uh, four quarterly releases in the year. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, I, I feel like it's very organized and it's cool. We all get to take our turns being the scrum master, you know, for the, um, for the, the sprints, which is nice. 
and um, yeah, you know, it allows us to like keep a. Uh, keep like everybody engaged and you know like check in to see like if anybody has blockers on their issues if we have to change anything about the processes that we already have in place you know so it's um yeah it's pretty good i like the you know the structure and how it's all laid out i feel like it, it manages expectations you know like you know how much time you have to work with and that's just not for you but also from like for people outside of that immediate department they have to respect you know like those boundaries um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much how it works for me. Right. And agile doesn't have to be, uh, software centric. It's just mm-hmm. very popular in the world of, uh, software engineering and web development and working in software in general. It's, it's just a very popular methodology, but, uh, it doesn't have to apply to that. It can apply to, uh, just about any project really, um, yeah. So maybe maybe we'll st- step back and like explain the difference between like normal project management uh, methodology, just like you know going down the list, doing what you need to do, and uh, agile. So um, with uh, agile, for instance, we can just start with that. Um, so like th- the basic idea is to just deliver um, like the value or software, whatever it is. Um, incrementally from the start of the project instead of all at once and then uh having the finished product at the very end so like if uh if you're building a, like a i don't know like a car for instance um you know you would start with like analysis you start you know you have the design and then you mm-hmm. start building and stuff and then you test the car and see if it works and then the final product is the car like the the big big project but um Let's say if you were applying that to like uh, agile methodology, you might start with something like a little tiny model car and work your way up from there. You get, you know, like a like a go kart and then you like get bigger and bigger and bigger up until you actually have like a real, real car. Mm-hmm. So it takes a it kind of like takes a normal. Oh, that was a loud car. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's like recording outside. But um. Yeah, you like you take the whole um, linear um, project timeline for a normal project, and you basically like flip it up on itself, and you have continuous mm-hmm. activities instead of one-off activities. Um, right. So if you guys have ever had an app and it asks you to like update it because there's like a you know a bug fix or it, you know whatever you know it'll say like the version number is like thirteen point two point seven. Um, yeah, so those people who are working on those apps, they're most likely, I would say, like in almost all cases, they're probably following some sort of agile because if they're continuously delivering these new updates, just like how you were saying, you like turn toggles on once the once your uh, bug error has been handled and you can make it public for everybody. It's like the same idea. You're just uh, you're updating something in the software and then you're delivering it to the customer and then they mm-hmm. can update the app. And then from there, they get feedback from the customer to see how they're reacting to it, how it works. And then yeah. from there, the team can either rectify the if there is another error or they can add more um, features that enhance that even better. So they can always mm-hmm. continuously develop and continuously deliver. Yeah, yeah. The I think the like a big... Um, like word at least that I associate with agile is you know it's very um it's iteration you know like yes. it's an iterative uh, process that or like cycle that you just keep going on and on and on um and um it's all about trying to like fine tune you know like whatever it is if it's a product um because I think like you said you know like even backtracking agile started in the manufacturing business you know like obviously yeah, there is yeah. Um, like so many different processes when you're manufacturing something, you know, tangible, like something concrete. And but the same thing applies to software. You know, it's a very controlled process. Um, and like time is everything, you know, like uh, if you I mean, how many times have I seen like some tickets that I literally the I think the last uh, the last sprint I missed um the branch cut which is when they actually cut you know like the the code um and that will be part of the next release um and or deploy and i missed it by like 
30 minutes. So that meant that my code wasn't going to be deployed for like a whole month, um, you know, because it wasn't going to make the deployment. But oh, it's wow. a matter of like respecting the deadlines, you know. So, um, yeah, obviously, like one thing, it depends on the gravity of the situation. Like it depends on the priority levels. Like if it's a bad enough issue, then you need a patch, you know. Um, but generally, that's not really what they, they try to do because, the quicker you try to deploy a fix or whatever it is, you that means that you'll have less time to um, to test it, and it carries a lot of risk. So, um, so yeah, I like you know like the the work that I do. It doesn't really involve patches that much, unless it's a mm-hmm. very critical issue. You know that I will have to work with the developers and be like, look, the client reported this. Is it supposed to be happening this way? If it's not, then we need approval. So we have to keep going up the ladder you know, to eventually get the, yes, this is going to be a patch or no, you're going to have to wait like a couple of weeks for it to go out, you know, but you still have to fix it, obviously. Um, so yeah, but the, um, but the, in general, yeah, you just keep going, you know, like following the, those steps of, uh, going through, like you said, you know, the, the, um, I think like the, the main five scrum events, you know, like you have the sprints that we talked about in my case, they were two weeks long. Mm-hmm. Then you, you have your sprint planning, you know, to understand uh, like how many story points each one of your user stories are going to take. Like in the, in the case of a story, it can be a new feature. Um, and you know, like we also have your daily scrum meetings to kind of like check in with your team, see where everybody's at. If you need like the collaboration between, you know, more than just one developer to handle a particular user story. And then, yeah, you have like your sprint review and your retrospective, you know, like uh, where you're going to essentially review, like what you achieved in that particular, um, in that particular sprint. And if you need to move any user stories because they didn't get done in one sprint and you need to move them over to the next, then you can do that. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know, like I, uh. I don't know if the, that's the most common, you know, methodology. I I see it like everywhere, to be honest. You know, so like some kind of knowledge, like when you are in school. Um, I'm sure that like for a regular computer science student, I had a class that was strictly agile. You know, that we had to build a project, present the prototype, and then fine tune it, and then present the the final product. Um, but, um, yeah, like I feel like when, especially when trying to break into the industry, you know, uh, knowing, uh, at least like the, uh, top level, you know, uh, overview or like, you know, like a general idea of what the agile, uh, process is, then it's, uh, it'll be very, um, it'll be very hel- like helpful, you know, to share that knowledge d- during like an, uh, an interview process or application process. Oh yeah. But huge. also because if the organization that you're applying for uses it, then that means that you might have an easier time adapting to it when, you know, if you do join them, uh, because you will know what to expect, you know? So, Mm -hmm. yeah. It's it's nice uh, that it's standard, like a, mm -hmm. like there's a set of rules and values and main events that happen within it. So transitioning from, from one role to another, even from one company to another company, uh, these, uh, these things are like basically standard so you don't have too many surprises or like too much to get used to it's just luckily something that a lot of people follow so then it's not all because it's tricky enough starting at a new company right because you have to learn the culture right. you have to learn like people's names and everybody like how does everybody play um into the company as a whole mm-hmm. but if you know like yeah. how your daily work is going to be and how it's organized and how projects are managed, then that's like a huge stepping stone that you don't really have to worry about hurling over. So um, that's why they do have a lot of documentation, a lot of uh, they have courses on it. I'm actually doing one right now, which kind of inspired this episode. I wanted to like genuinely nice. learn uh, how to how to like actually use the software that people use to track um, sprints mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, it just, it's, it's so valuable and you can literally use it for not just software. You can use it for just about anything. And, uh, I, yeah. I even saw one, uh, online for like chores around the house. You could, you could do, uh, agile for that. I was like, okay, that's pretty funny. I like that. <laughs> it's a good way of like, yeah. pi- like picturing it if you don't work in software. Like, um, right. yeah, you just have like, um, oh, I think, I think the best clip is from, oh my gosh, Silicon Valley where they 
it was the, when they were first starting the the company, and uh, I think it was Jared. Um, it was it, whatever, whatever, um, whatever the guy's I name is. I think he was the one. You're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he like he's like, oh, this is getting out of hand because they had it was a uh, Gilfoyle and uh, uh, somebody else. I don't remember the other character, but they both deployed something. They that they they both worked on the exact same feature or story or. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I guess if we're talking Agile right now, I'll just say uh, they worked on the same user story and they didn't know that because they weren't using Agile. So they lost track and they just like wasted, you know, two people's times for doing the same thing. And right, uh, right, right then and there, uh, Jared was like, OK, we got to use Scrum. So then he pulls out the mm-hmm. board. And if you guys want to picture it, if you've never seen it, it's a board like a Kanban board, I guess, would be the, the easiest one to explain. Um, mm-hmm. It's just a you know, essentially, it doesn't have to be a real board, but in this case, a, a board with a, some columns, and uh, each column represents a stage of the um, the user story. Or if you want, uh, what's another word for user story? Um, to do task, essentially, like a feature, yeah, a task, an mm-hmm. item. Uh, mm-hmm. So the first column, which would probably be all the way on the left, would be the backlog, right. typically, and it just has all the things that need to get done for the sprint and if somebody wants to work on said item or user story they just move it on over to the next column and then i guess it would be just in progress right yeah and uh that notifies everybody like okay this thing is happening that person's doing it perfect and then once it's done it goes into another column which is probably like testing qa yeah and then uh the the people who are in charge of that they test it or Sometimes it's self QA. It just depends on the company. It de- depends right. on the, the scale, everything. But uh, either way, it goes into a testing stage where it gets, you know, you know, a bunch of different tests. And uh, from there, it goes into, uh, I guess, finished or closed or, you know, it doesn't really matter on the wording, but uh, it's different yeah. for everybody. And, uh, and then once uh, something is... Um, once a column is empty, that's like that's the cue to move something from the backlog into the next one. Because I guess you can never have like an empty column. Is that is that does that make sense or is that that sounds about right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't, I don't think like unless you're done. I mean, I don't think you can. You're not really supposed to have an empty column. The whole idea is that once something is moved over um, and the column's empty, something else has to get moved over. So there's continuous workflow yeah. and. Uh, Mm-hmm. continuous communication going on yep. um yeah it it's great it's uh there's actually a manifesto on the whole idea of agile and uh i guess it yeah like you said it was uh in the manufacturing business sector and uh it just trickled on down to technology and uh mm-hmm. it's you know it's substandard essentially everybody kind of uses it so yeah i think waterfall start uh started in the military but that's another, you know, methodology. Oh, right, it's a yeah. bit different than Agile, but um, in yeah, Agile came from like the manufacturing business, and I feel like it makes a lot of sense because I mean, can you like how many processes and like there's a, a specific order for everything that happens in the production mm-hmm. of a product, you know? So, um, or like you put, you know, like the assembly line of a car, you know, um, right. a lot of people involved, a lot of um, a lot of um, like planning, you know, like you can't. Like you can't put tires in a car if you don't have the axle already installed, you know, like there is a specific order of things um, that, you know, that you uh, that you have to do in order before it gets ready to move on to the next stage. Um, And uh, yeah, I think one thing that I started using at the boot camp as well was Trello and you can like Mm -hmm. sign up for a free account with Trello and they have templates, you know, so you can choose like a. Uh, a software engineering or like an agile scrum board um so you can see like the the way that you can categorize like the status columns just like you said you know like your backlog the pending or like in progress you know testing uh and then completed deployed or whatever like Mm -hmm. there are a bunch of tools out there trello is a really good one that helps you like visualize but the concept is pretty much the same like you can draw the thing or you can do it even like silicon in silicon valley where they used you know sticky notes i feel like that's probably how it started you know like having a board with like sticky notes and a different story and 
every note um and then you just move it over you know like once you pick that um once you're like assign yourself to it so right um <clears throat> oh maybe yeah. we should say that uh uh what a user story might be because you could mm-hmm. i mean if you don't know um and you, you th- like in your mind you're thinking like oh i guess like how could you break it down really like because you could just say build the app as a user story but you know right. that obviously doesn't work because it doesn't disperse the work it doesn't um it does it doesn't make any sense because there's no order whatsoever you have to essentially break it down into a small chunk of work so um right. i found a sentence that kind <laughs> of explains like what um what a user story should be uh let's see where is it um Oh, it was so cool. Hang on one second. Um, Oh, here it is. So um, in the agile framework, user stories are the smallest units of work as a Mm -hmm. this is this is the sentence, by the way, as a as a type of user, I want to goal so that I receive benefit. So um, and like a a true, true example, because that was the template would be as a customer, Mm -hmm. I want to be able to create an account so I can see the purchases I made in the last year to help me budget for next year so that would be an example of a user story um it's not the whole it's not the whole product you're not building the exact whole thing but that would be a feature of the product so um and then you can even break it down from that because i i would imagine like i mean this this may not even be the best example because you could probably spend weeks implementing creating an account and seeing purchases so you could break that down into its own user stories and have like tiny little tasks to do for each of those things so it really it depends all on the yeah. scale of the project and where it's at and whatnot. But yeah, the whole idea is just to um, have it have it in small chunks and continuously uh, developing into them and having it all organized and that way everybody can see what each person has to do. It's just it's it's really great because everything's in order and everything makes perfect sense usually not all the time but you know in better order right. than if they weren't practicing agile um um yeah yeah. i think um the one thing that i was just refreshing my mind on it is like you usually start off with like a big theme and then you have your epics you know and then you have your user stories and then and then you have tasks um so the the theme could be like the overall encompassing idea of um you know like what you're trying to build um like i don't know like an e-commerce app um i mm-hmm. think that would probably be it and then for the epics you would be like you have like a shopping cart or <laughs> um you have you know like a uh, user accounts you know like user profiles or whatever um that allows the users to save like what they put well like what you know their favorites and things like that and then as the user stories like it would start to break down so essentially like you start off with like a big idea it's kind of like um oh my gosh what are what are those uh diagrams called i i forget what they're called but you know what i mean like it just kind of breaks down into levels you know you start off with a big idea and then you start to break that down into another level and then you break those down even more so they're like actual, you know, so they're, they become actionables mm-hmm. because then you know exactly what you're supposed to be working on without really overlapping with other tasks, you know, or like other user stories. Your like your work is very focused, which goes right. back to like the Silicon Valley example, like you're so you're not stepping on anybody's toes, you know, you're not doubling the efforts because essentially, you know, it's about um, being productive, but focused without wasting time working on the same thing. Like you don't need two developers to work on the same thing, you know, so the exact same thing. I don't mean like the same product or like the same epic. That's different. But um, but yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much how I remember when I took that class, you know, like we we even questioned it. We're like, oh, why are we getting so granular with this process? Like, why are we breaking everything down? But it really is so important because the if you put a lot of time and thought into how you do your sprint planning, it always goes on, goes off like it goes on a long way and it will prevent, you know, hiccups from happening during it or by the end of it where people are like, OK, I don't know what I'm supposed to be working on. So like if you spend like a couple hours, you know, like or several hours, maybe depending on the scale of your project to do the sprint planning 
it's going to be smoother for the team because they'll know exactly what they need to work on, mm-hmm. you know. And then you could be saving a lot of hours at the end of it because you planned, you know, like everything exactly. So, um, yeah, in like in our in uh, the the product that I work in, like the the sprint planning is done by the product owner, mm-hmm. um, and you know, like that takes a long time. I'm sure you know, like it's a lot of work um, oh, for yeah. that person, but. Um, but yeah, like it's done for, you know, all of the sprints, all of the train stops that we have, you know, like the uh, the particular deploys. Um, and that also is going to depend on like the needs of the business, you know, because if you have like a recurring request, because we allow our clients to submit feature enhancements or like feature requests, you know, so if you get like a bunch of, you know, higher, like a, uh, important clients that are requesting for the same feature you might have to consider that you know like before you like before your sprint planning so it is worked in as a feature um but generally i think like um for right now as far as i know like the the sprints are planned well beforehand um maybe like you know like the sprint that you're going to be working on a month from now has already been planned or something like that you know um unless there are things like that are like moved over But as far as I know, like it's worked well before it even takes place. But that's because they're being proactive. That's the best way, you know, Mm -hmm. so like you're planning ahead. um, And uh, so everything is organized, you know, and everyone knows like what to expect when the time comes. But um, but yeah, there like you said, I think taking a course on it is not a bad idea. And also looking at, you know, some boards. Um, even if they're not like doing a software project, anything that you really do in life, like you can, you know, like even daily tasks, like chores mm-hmm. in your house can be done with a Kanban board. Um, so I recommend it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love it. Cause I, I love, I love peace and order and yeah. knowing exactly what I need to do and not being overwhelmed by, you know, like the, uh, the maybe like the the task of cleaning up the house for instance you know like yeah geez, do you hear that <laughs> yeah i did that's a lot that's a loud muffler yeah jesus it's not even a cool car anyway um yeah i, <laughs> I like it because then um because so, i don't know sometimes i i get uh i get really anxious if i am like oh god i have to i mean for example like oh i have to i gotta clean my house like it just sounds mm-hmm. so like what's happening oh i just rocked the mic and it like fed back into the mic i don't know anyway (laughs) um (laughs) instead of saying yeah i have to clean my whole house um you know you you mentally break it down into smaller things like oh i'll just do the dishes and then after that if i get to it i'll vacuum after that i'll clean the bathroom like that all that Mm -hmm. sort of stuff so it's just it's more executable you don't have to stress too hard unless you know you have a ton of things to do but it just it, yeah. it works in real life, like with work and can make your work yeah. even more. Um, uh, what, what's the word? Uh, doable, I guess, is <laughs> for lack of a yeah. better word, just doable. And uh, yeah, it's great. Um, maybe. Yeah, uh, can... Oh, what's that? No, I was going to say, so for um, Trello that I've been talking about, oh, yeah. I use it for work, you know, to track like some of the cases that I work in and you can create like some useful automations like you can, you know, like if uh, I like I call all of my tickets a particular, you know, like it, they all have like the same prefix and mm-hmm. then with the ticket number. So, you know, like you can create these little rules um, if the prefix is identified make sure you drop this checkbox, you know, like and then like move it over so you can even automate these things, you know, so I feel like um, mm-hmm. it's very useful. Um, you can track like, you know, the the progress um, because like I said, I also have like these daily stand ups, you know, so I also want to make sure that I'm sharing all the detail that I can. I keep very thorough notes of everything that I work. I've been using Notion for the uh, for the past six months since I started. Uh, and I really like it. You know, like you can also do the same thing um, with uh, Notion. You can create like some, uh, you know, like pay, like organized notes. And uh, oh, yeah, you Notion, can create a Kanban right. board, or, like calendar with tasks and all of that stuff. You know, like mm-hmm. I live by that. And just recently... No, or but for the past several months now, I've been using the the remind feature in Slack like for the longest time. So you know, forward slash remind me uh, to do this or to you know to ping this person or to 
uh, tell my manager I'm going to be out for an appointment or something like that. You know, like there's so many things that you can use nowadays to like stay mm-hmm. organized. Um, yeah. But yeah, when you're working like on a specific project and you want to make sure all of your tasks are like laid out in the beginning um, before forgetting, you know, like halfway through um, about something that you should have added in the beginning, then like a Kanban board is very helpful. Um, I used it when I was in school to control or like to keep track of all of the homeworks, assignments, you know, tests that I was going to have. I set deadlines and I used Trello for all of that. So it was mm-hmm. really helpful. Yeah, I it, think, it's awesome. I think Trello, um, we used Trello when we worked together at the last company that we worked at together at. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, that's right. But I did. think I think Trello is owned by the same company that does Jira. Do you know if yeah, that's correct? Atlation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Atlation. That's right. Yeah, because I just started um, in the little course I'm doing. Uh, I think you could pick whatever you wanted to, um, mm-hmm. but I wanted to pick Jira just because I know that we use it at the at the company we work at now, and uh, yeah. um, it, it, it's a lot more. Uh, what's the word? Oh my gosh! Um, you can essentially use it with a ton of other apps. Like you can use it yeah. with uh, Slack. You can use it with. Um, zoom it just it it, Mm -hmm. it's something that can be plugged into a lot of the stuff you already do so yeah um and it's industry standard as well so that's uh uh that's what i've been trying to use um but um you guys use jira as well right but you're saying Mm -hmm. for personal use for your work day like not personal but you know like to to, like keep track of yourself essentially at work you use uh trello and notion yeah, yeah. I use um, we use Jira because that's how the team, you know, um, keeps track of all of the cases that we have going. Mm-hmm. Um, but for like my personal notes, I use Notion. And then for my personal tr- like, you know, track of the the the, um, the cases that I per- that I have assigned to myself, I use Trello as well. So I just signed up for like a free account or something. And, um, you know, that's how I can like drop um, because if it's not a task that I'll get done by like the end of the day or something like that or the end of the week and I don't want to forget it's something I want to like keep in like, you know, um, a backlog for not for the work. But like if I came across a tool that I would like to take a little course on or do some digging about how it works, you know. Then I create a little Trello card because, yeah, that's what they're called. They're Trello cards, you mm-hmm. know, and um, I just uh, keep it, you know, like in my account so I can go back to it before forgetting. But, um, yeah, I think that it's all about balance, too. Like uh, I could really go crazy with uh, Trello, but I feel like the secret is finding that happy medium where you don't have too little and you're using the tool like well, you know, for your benefit, but you don't have too much where you're stressing yourself out with things that you haven't done, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just like uh, it's a good tool, but, but, you know, like just making it work for like how you think you would thrive instead of like stress out because you're like, oh, my God, I have like 50 things in my backlog. So like maybe don't do that. You know, <laughs> that that might be a little <laughs> overwhelming. <laughs> maybe don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just uh, just don't. Do yeah, that. I don't know. Drop things that you think that you that are valuable. You know, you don't you can get granular, but I feel like um, mm-hmm. it should be more of like reminder cards sort of, you know. Right. Um, yeah, if you guys want to try it out yourself and use it in your everyday life, um, I would say check out Jira because you can you can do it for free um, as long as cool, it's like yeah. under I think it's under like ten people on the team or whatever, and they they might limit oh, a nice. few different things, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. I think that I'm sure that they have like a some kind of like trial, you know, uh, account. Um, I'm using it for free right now. And oh, okay, there's cool. no like time limit as far as I'm aware, but nice. um, it does say like I could upgrade and have like more accounts linked to it, so then they could also access the uh, the Kanban board that I have and all the other stuff. Oh, I see. Um, but since it's just for me, you know, I'm I'm using the free version. Um, yeah. So yeah, if you guys want to, I don't know if you let's say, oh wow, yeah, if you work at a company right now and you're like, wow, this could be managed a lot better, and like. Right. They're not using Aja. Maybe you could be the hero, swoop right on in and uh, mm-hmm. try to get things organized. And maybe you might get yourself a little promotion and be product manager, or, you know, project manager, or whoever. 
So, uh, yeah. 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 That, sure. that was a, uh, that was our big talking point for this episode. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Um, my recommendation. So you already shared yours. Mine. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to say Jira, but we just talked about Jira. So, uh, my, my <laughs> real recommendation, I guess, um, is not software. Um, I just got a bag. It's like, you know how people like have been wearing fanny packs recently, oh, not, yeah. like in the past couple mm-hmm. years, you know, fanny packs have been kind of cool, kind of not. And now they're like kind of cool again, again. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah. Right. So I got something that's kind of a fanny pack, but kind of not. Um, it's like a, it's like a satchel almost. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It, it's called a bagu. I don't know if you've seen them, but, uh, a ba- bagu, mm-hmm. B-A-G-G-U. Yeah. Oh, I'll just send you a picture. Oh, interesting. Of, yeah, let me see. Thank you. Um, this thing has been just amazing. I mean, I hate having things in my pocket, and yeah. a lot of things just fall out of my pockets. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I got this little bag, and I I can keep my sunglasses and my glasses if I need to, like switch one or the other out. Um, nice. The my cleaner for it, my phone, my keys, my wallet. Um, wow. my, if like I have anything else I want to carry, I can just throw it on in there. Um, yeah, I got just the classic black one. I can't find it right now, but, um, yeah, when I find it, I'll, I'll link it below. Maybe they'll, uh, yeah. maybe back will give me, uh, my own <laughs> little tech heads link and we'll get like 10% off or whatever for you guys. But, um, in case that doesn't work out, I'll still link it below. Um, yeah, it's a it's a great okay. company. We actually, uh, Dylan has a ton of Bagu products, and I was like, oh, uh, I guess this is kind of cool. So, um, yeah, I got myself a little satchel. I don't know what the exact, I guess, is it a pouch or a case? It might just be a bag. What? Let me see. Um, oh, maybe it's a crossbody bag. That might be it. Um, oh, cool. found it. Heck yeah. Yeah, crossbody bag. That's how you would phrase it. Um. Yeah, I will send this to you. I'll send it. I'll put it on the the Patreon. I'll put. I, I'll, I'll even put it in the description so everybody can access it. Um. Yeah. Let's see. Let me DM it to you. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, I have seen these around. Very cool. Yeah, it's it's, it's great. I love it. That's awesome. Um, let's see. We uh, I think we covered it all for the fiftieth, right? Is that is there anything else? Yeah. No, I think that's. Oh, oh, duh! I went to a Coldplay concert on Tuesday. It was oh, so good. I, I loved bet. it. I've been wanting to see them for so long, um, and it was such a memorable experience. Sam and I went, and we both like loved it. It was so hot, um, but. They waited until the sun, you know, totally uh, came down. So they I think they went on stage at like 9 p.m. Um, but it was so good because they have su- such great songs, like some mm-hmm. really good hits, you know, like through the years. Uh, and I was really happy that we got to see them because there was like some talk that they were going to kind of like do their own thing in a couple of years. I don't know if they're going to be coming out with like a last album, you know, but um, they might be like, you know, breaking up the band or whatever. So. Um, yeah, I was really, really pumped. Uh, we drove all the way to Tampa, but it was so worth it. It mm-hmm. was awesome. I oh, loved them. Who opened? Um, so there was a local girl and then her opened. Um, I don't know. Oh, if yeah. Yeah. Her is their opening act. Mm-hmm. Wow. That I feel like that doesn't match. Am I wrong or did it match? Well, I mean, I th- like she had some good rock songs, which I wasn't really expecting, you know. And oh, then, yeah, so I thought that it was kind of interesting. It, they, she also came out back on stage during Coldplay to play one of their songs um, with uh, Chris Martin. And, uh, yeah, I think that they have like a single, you know, like that uh, that she's featured in or something like that. And it was very good. I thought that it actually did pretty well. Um, it was a it was a good mix. Her as H E R like the yeah. um doesn't she I thought she did like R and B and stuff like that I'm surprised yeah I was I was too but there was like it sounded like a lot of her songs at least sounded a little like rock you know so really? I was like this is interesting yeah I can see like why uh, 
why she you know decided to I mean, who would who would say no to opening for Coldplay? Honestly, but oh, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> yeah, oh, yeah, they did do a song together, huge. huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's the one that they sang, but it was so so good. I've liked them for a long time now, and um, yeah, it was a uh, you know a dream come true. You know, I was so excited that I got to see them. It was the best concert I've been to for sure. Is one of their song? They have they have emojis for the names of their songs. Yeah, I think the new album they do. I noticed that just yesterday. <laughs> oh, I, how does that? Okay, that's so interesting because, like, I would imagine in some scenarios, like, if you're linking a song, the song name probably appears sometimes in the URL. So how do you do it with an emoji? Because oh, yeah. you can't have an emoji. Oh, because emojis have, um, they have string values. Yeah. That must be what it is if they're going to do it that way. That yeah, that probably is how it like reads, you know, like um mm-hmm. in HTTP. Yeah. But um yeah, there were <laughs> so, Leave it to so us good. to we're talking <laughs> about Coldplay. We still talk about coding. <laughs> yeah, right. No, yeah, I thought that that was cool too. Um wow. yeah, speaking of emojis, so I was reading that um, you know, Disney is releasing Lightyear, like the Buzz Lightyear movie. Mm-hmm. And uh someone in the web dev subreddit was asking how Disney managed to like post these uh, uh Twitter messages with a, a Buzz emoji cuz that didn't exist, you know. So Apparently, I was like, oh, yeah, what kind of like web, you know, trick are they running here? Like, can they embed their own emoji on a tweet, uh, like on a tweet? And apparently they can't. So it's all like a marketing thing. If you spend like if you, you know, sign a contract that you're going to spend at least like a million bucks uh, in ad like advertising through Twitter or whatever, then they give you like they allow you to or they create your emoji for you. So I was like, well, that's not a web dev trick. That's just a money trick. <laughs> so, yeah, but um, that, I thought that that was kind of interesting because uh, someone brought that up in the web dev subreddit. So I, I thought it was a it was a good catch. I was like, I didn't even notice that. But then again, there is no buzz emoji, you know, so it's a custom emoji, a custom emoji. Oh, yeah. But that's because Disney is spending the big bucks to advertise the movie, you know, mm-hmm. so. Um, they have a contract with Twitter, and then I guess if you spend enough money, they you can make like you can use that custom emoji. But I think it's only for a limited amount of time, like whatever, however long that marketing campaign goes on for, you know. Hmm. Who owns emoji? That's my question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who owns emoji? There was a. Uh, before we close out, there was. Um, do you know? Do you know the YouTuber, um, Tom something? What's his name? Oh, uh, Th- Tom Scott, I think. Uh, what does he do? Like, uh, uh, what, what the, kind of? He's like an, uh, he's like a mathematician. He's a computer science dude. Um, hmm. he's just a nerd, but he does, uh, He does really entertaining YouTube videos where they're like, he'll just go to really cool places and explain the history of it. Or, uh, oh, wow. He did a video. Um, he did a video where the title was the view count. So he, he titled it like, this video has this many views. And he hit the whole video is about how he made, uh, a, a script that automatically updates the title with the view count. So it says like 38 million views or whatever right now, but it, it goes it refreshes like every second to like update the view count on the title of the video so like he does like he does little things like that or he'll explain like he'll explain why like voting like elections and stuff will won't be electronic ever probably just because how how many how like how perfect it would have to be essentially like he just he goes into really because he's such a smart dude so um that's anyway he like 10 or 15 years ago, him and his buddy, they built um, a social media platform that was, it was it was just a big joke. Like they just wanted to do it because they could. They built a social mm. media platform where your username uh, was only in emojis. Like you couldn't use oh. strings. So uh, they talked about how like they got so many bots who spammed it and like how like um, all of the good emojis were taken immediately by like not really 
real people so people had to like pick Uh like combinations of emojis and stuff and how easily they got um i think the website got completely taken from them because it was just it was just terrible security and stuff so they just edited Uh it 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 was cool um cool, cool idea but i guess it didn't really uh land but uh anyway guys it is raining right now on the balcony but oh, I'm, no. I'm covered so i'm good but uh that might be a great stopping point because i'm getting a little <laughs> tiny yeah. wet so i know yeah gotta keep that equipment dry too yeah. we'll be back for the next one <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly this might be our last episode guys <laughs> yeah, that, right. there's our there's our title um is this the last episode <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. All right, guys. Cool. Uh, tech heads out, right? Are you anything else, Anna? No, that's all. Yeah. See you guys next time. All right. Peace out. Bye. <laughs>